Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show today. Today, we're going to be diving in. We're going to be talking about shelf corporations. Uh, we're going to be going through, in, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, every single thing that you should know about shelf corporations before you even think about considering them or purchasing one. For those that don't know me, my name is Ty Crandall. I'm actually the CEO here at Credit Suite, and we help customers obtain business credit for their EIN that's not linked to their personal social security number. We also help with obtaining all different kinds of business financing. So we are very close to the topic because a lot of people come in our doors and think that by getting a shelf corporation, it makes it easier for them to get credit and financing. And those are some of the myths that we're going to be diving into and uh, decoding as we get into today. So um, look, there's no shortcuts in life, right? The same is uh, true about building business credit. We see a lot of people try to use shelf corporations to build business credit as an example, because they believe that a business that's been in business or a business that's been open longer has a better chance of actually obtaining business credit. Well, there's really no shortcuts in building business credit, and as there are no shortcuts in life as there are in business credit as well. Yet people try to do this all the time. And two of the most common things we see people do is trying to buy shelf corporations or buy trade lines. So one of the more common ways to try to game the system again is buying shelf corporations. And the idea here is that you're buying a corporation that already exists. So it you make it look to credit issuers that you've been in business longer than what you really have been. So a shelf corporation is a corporation basically on paper only. So it was administratively formed and then put on a shelf for several years to age. So an example here is it's very cheap in Florida to open up uh, to set up an entity. It's about $70 a year or $70 to set one up. So what a shelf corporation basically is, is it's somebody that buys and sets up an entity and then they do nothing with it. They just set up the entity to let it age, to let it get older. Okay. And they're not actually doing anything with it. So the term shelf or aged only means that the company already has been filed and it's just sitting on a shelf. Nothing's happening with the company. It's already been filed. And then it's just sitting there and building seasoning, whereas nothing else is really going on with it. So the company is just waiting basically to be purchased. So what happens is especially many years ago when you didn't have the internet, when it took a long time to set up entities, et cetera, there became this market for seasoned businesses. And that's what people got into the market for, right? Just like domains. You can go to GoDaddy and buy a domain for what it really costs, seven to 12 bucks. But there are people that think of domains that other people may want to buy. They buy them all and then they sell them at a hyper premium. Well, it's just kind of similar in shelf corporations. These are just entities people set up, never had an intention of doing anything with them. Their whole goal is to let them age or season and then sell a seasoned entity um, at a pretty hefty price. So shelf corporations go by a lot of name, age corporations, seasoned shelf corporations, off-the-shelf companies, but they are different than a shell corporation, shell, S-H-E-L-L. A shell corporation is a legitimate entity that a lot of people use for a lot of different reasons, including pass-through, but shelf corporation is definitely different than a shell corporation. But here's some of the names that shelf corps also go by. So what is in a shelf corp? Well, shelf corporations are not the same as shell corporations. As I mentioned, a shell corporation are completely different in the scope and formation uh, because they often have no significant assets or operational structure. They're really meant for a lot of businesses as pass-through entities. But a shelf corporation is a company created years ago. It was made for the sole purpose of being sold in the future for an inflated amount of money. A person forms a company, does nothing with it other than file annual reports and cover the annual fees. Once the corporation is a few years old, they believe it has a kind of value and they try to basically sell it to people like you potentially. So it used to be that this was considered a legitimate way to streamline a startup, right? They were rather useful before electronic registration existed. So really this whole thing formed before you could just go online and set up an entity. I once did an experiment and I was able to set up my entity, get my EIN number and set up my bank account in less than an hour. And I had to drive to the bank. So I set up the entity, set up the EIN, drove to the bank, set up the bank account and got back. And it was like less than an hour, it was some 50 something minutes. So things have changed. It's super easy to set up entities online now. These really formed and one of the benefits was you could already get an entity that was set up instead of waiting weeks or months to set one up. You don't have to wait 
needed anymore due to electronic registration. It's instant in every state I've seen to set up an entity. This was when setting up a new corporation again took months. Um, however, setting them up now is very, very, very easy compared to what it used to be. And selling them as a means to get around credit guidelines is fairly new. So what happened is as electronically, it became easier to set up entities. Then these shelf corporation companies started saying, well, what else can we sell these to do? And one of the concepts, one of the ideas, well, we'll sell them to people with the premise that the longer the company is that you have, or the, the older age of business you have, the more likely you're going to get business credit financing. I'm not saying that's true. We'll talk about the truth of shelf corporations here as we proceed, but I'm just telling you about where the idea and the concept of these actually comes from. So shelf corporations are legal and they do have some legitimate purposes. You can set up a shelf corporation. There's there's nothing illegal about doing so. In theory, people think they can be used to basically qualify for bank loans, credit, or even a government contract. This is because they or their existing company do not have the required credit scores or the time in business, right? So the idea here, shelf, corpora shelf companies, shelf corporation companies basically are leading you to believe that by buying a company that's aged, that it's easier to get credit, it's easier to get financing, it's easier to get these type of government contracts. So shelf corporations can be used to get the opportunity to bid on contracts, in my opinion. That's about the only legitimate reason for shelf corporations. You have a business. You want to bid on a government contract. The government contract requires you be in business three years. And you say, well, if I buy a three years age corporation, I have a chance to bid on these contracts versus using a business that I'm just setting up. Okay, so that makes sense. If you're getting into an industry where you're going to bid on contracts and you say, well, I could buy a shelf corporation or set up a new one. And if I buy a shelf corporation, then I could get more contracts. Well, then legitimately, that actually may make sense. Some jurisdictions require a company be in business for a certain length of time in order to bid on government jobs. Otherwise, a company wouldn't have the ability to get it. So this could get you projects, jobs from the government that you wouldn't have been able to get without an aged corporation. Okay, um, But what does a shelf corporation do? Really nothing. A shelf corporation doesn't engage in any business. Most shelf corporations are 100% inactive. They don't set up bank accounts with these or do anything. They just set up the entity and pay the annual fees. They've never had income assets or bank accounts that you know of. They never had operations or activity of any kind that you know of. Okay. And you got to be careful here because if they if they have had activities, if they had have legal action against the entity, you know, you're liable for that. So there's some things we're going to talk about as we proceed here, but things to think about. If the, if the corporation you're buying has had activity, well, then you're liable for what happens. If that corporation got credit and defaulted on it, you bought it, you're liable. If the credit did, if the company did some things and now has a lawsuit coming and then the company gets sued and you bought the company, guess what? You get sued, right? So that's what happens. You need to keep in mind that these type of things could be potential realities. So often people buy such companies in Nevada, Wyoming, California, Delaware, just because it's easier and cheaper to set up these entities in those kind of areas. So what do you get when you buy one? Well, several things come with the purchase of a shelf corporation. It's basically the articles of incorporation in the state it was incorporated, the action of sole incorporator or document which transfers the company to you, the minutes of the meetings, which are blank sample forms, right? Because there's no real meetings, a corporate kit, which you could get from legal zoom or any of those type of places and stock certificates, basically the basics of what you get whenever you would set up any entity. Okay. These are also included a corporate seal, a corporate bylaws, registered agent service, federal Federal I, I had tax ID number. Just so you know, all of these things pretty much you can get when you set up any entity. Some of them you need to get like an e EIN in a lot of cases. Others uh, come in a kit that you can easily buy from a company that you pay to set up your entity for like 50 to 200 bucks. Uh, so what's the official word on shelf corps? Well, shelf corps are not looked at favorably by regulators, lenders, business reporting agencies either. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, many say they are unethical and borderline illegal. Here's where we get into problems. I have a pretty simple rule of thumb I follow. If lenders, regulators, the credit reporting agency, credit issuers do not like something, do not do it. Because what happens is when they don't like it, they're building in safeguards 
to prevent what you're trying to do from happening. The bottom line is you never want to try to do anything to con anybody, especially in the lending and credit space. But in this case, regulators, lenders, the business reporting agencies, credit issuers, none of them look favorably on shelf corps. They all literally define them as unethical or borderline illegal. Some even call them fraud. So it's very dangerous territory when you're getting into something for the intention of getting credit or financing where right from the beginning, the people issuing the credit and financing want nothing to do with what you're trying to do. So let's look at what the FDIC says. Shell and shelf companies can be created uh, domestically or in a, a foreign country. Shell and shelf corporations are often formed by individuals and businesses to conduct legitimate transactions. However, they can and they can be and have been used as vehicles for common financial crime schemes such as money laundering, fraudulent loans, and fraudulent purchasing. By virtue of the ease of information of the absence of ownership disclosure requirements, shell and shelf corporations are an attractive vehicle for those seeking to con conduct illicit activity. And that comes from an FDIC alert back in 2000. And nine. Okay, so here you can see what the um, we'll see what the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network says. So the majority of Shelf Corp uh, sold to foreign investors appear to differently significantly from those used in reverse acquisitions, for example, and that they appear to have been set up solely for purchase and were not aged or put on the shelf after some period of actual operation, though they too may not have been used immediately. This type of uh, this type of shell appears to have few legitimate uses and can fairly easily be employed to disguise ownership or movement of assets or to facilitate illegal activity. So here's another one, Entrepreneur Magazine. I've had numerous clients come through my office wondering what they might do with a shelf corporation they paid five to 15,000 for. They're sold on flashy terms like Dun & Bradstreet numbers, paid X scores and unsecured credit and how they would somehow win larger loans by using shelf corps. The truth is there is no shortcut process. Building corporate credit takes time. And that again comes from Entrepreneur Magazine um, on that same topic. Let's talk about what the reporting agencies say. Thieves can purchase a 40-year-old corporate charter off the shelf, making them look established and low risk, creating and purchasing these aged shelf corporations, which adds creditor confidence and often drives automatic decisioning rules as legal. Using them with the intent for fraudulent person pur purposes is not. So let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, the reason I'm showing you all these quotes is because I don't want you to think that what I'm telling you today is my opinion. I, I base my opinions on fact and law. And in this case, everybody that you're going to see says the exact same attitude about shelf corps. They don't like it. Dun & Bradstreet, as a matter of fact, does two things very specifically that hurt a lot of our clients. For one, they flag your credit profile, meaning they put an alert on your credit profile and notify anybody that looks at it that you've been dealing with a company that's an unscrupulous company. We actually see that on our clients' credit reports. They try to get them off. They're very difficult to. So even the fact that one of these companies looks at your credit profile or they know you're dealing with them can throw up a red flag on your credit profile. We've also seen the extreme of Dun & Bradstreet just shutting down the credit profile. They terminate it. They close it. It's over. It's done. It's gone. And we see this all the time. And people come to us and say, what do I do now? And the answer is start over. So what happens is they buy a bogus shelf corp. They get legitimate trade lines and start adding real credit on the shelf corp. The bureaus, DMB gets wind that it's a shelf corp. And DMB shuts down the credit profile and score. And all the trade lines you've done are gone. There's no reporting. And the only chance you'd have is to actually start a new one. So again, the other thing, and I'm not a lawyer, but I'll tell you what DMB is saying here is that when you are intentionally trying to mislead lenders and credit issuers, then using them with the intent for fraudulent purposes is illegal. You could really be – you could be participating in a crime. So the question becomes and what Dun & Bradstreet saying here is, hey, look – what are you using the shelf corporation for? If you're trying to buy an aged corporation to make it look like your business has been open way longer than it really has for the intention of going out to get credit and loans to deceive lenders and credit issuers that your business has been open longer than it has, then you actually coming in with the intent to fraudulate is illegal. And they are somewhat true on that. So 
Intent does matter here, and I'm not an attorney. You should check with an attorney on the legality side of things, but intent, and I'm not giving you legal advice either. I'm just kind of walking through what their quote is here. So intent is a big, big part of things. What is your intent? If your intent is to buy bogus trade lines by shelf corporations with the desire of deceiving lenders and credit issuers to give you money, well, that can easily be seen and defined as fraud, and that's illegal. That can get you into some serious trouble. Okay, so again, DMB has a history of red flagging and shutting down these. So here's another one from DMB. When instructing how to read the reports, DMB says users get a unique view into the ownership and management changes of a company since the data first began operations. Each time a management or ownership change, the report receives a new present control date. Anytime a change of control happens in a business, it's like it becomes a brand new business. If a company started 1900 but underwent a control change two years ago, quite frankly, it's a two-year-old business. Boom. Mic drop. That's what DMB says, guys. And this is this is the problem you have. For one, lenders and credit issuers pull business credit reports. As DMB just said, business credit reports specifically list ownership changes partially because of shelf corporations. They are alerting lenders and credit issuers that an ownership change has occurred in large part to notify them of a potential shelf corporation purchase. Because when you buy a shelf corporation, the owner changes from that previous owner to you. So the bureaus tell the lenders and credit issuers this. Here's the second problem. When lenders and credit issuers know this, when they see this on your report, then they want to know how long you've had your business bank account. They default to business bank account open date to determine how long you've been in business. So if you're trying to buy a bogus shelf corporation that's three years old to convince lenders and credit issuers you've been open three years ago, the problem is the minute you do that, Dun & Bradstreet and Equifax and Experian update the credit report to show that the ownership has changed. That automatically triggers a red flag in lenders and credit issuers' computers to then go to ask you for bank statements to verify how long you've had the business open instead of the actual open date. Or or they just default automatically, as Dun & Bradstreet just says here, and they automatically default and just look at the date the ownership changed as when the business actually opened. So they don't really provide you any benefit. Anybody that's tried to convince you you could buy a shelf corporation to get loans and credit because you could deceive lenders and credit issuers that you've been open longer than you have, that doesn't work. The reality is that's bogus because the bureaus report an ownership change and then lenders and credit issuers, computers are red flagged. Then they scrutinize your application more than they typically would. And then they either look at your bank account open date or the ownership change date as the date to open. The whole corporation that you bought that you thought you were buying this age goes away anyway anyways so again huge problems here with buying this so what DMB is basically saying buying shelf corp isn't really going to provide you anything good okay here's from Experian creating companies that impersonate a stable well-established company in order to deceive creditors or suppliers is a way that criminals are using shelf companies for fraudulent use guys you're hearing some strong language here in the FDIC at the Experian with Dun and Bradstreet they're all saying the same things so fraudulent illegal criminals. Now, again, I'm not an attorney, not giving you legal advice, but again, it comes down to intent. What is your intent? If your intent was to buy a shelf corporation to use it to deceive lenders and credit issuers that you've been open longer than you have to get money, well, that could easily be seen as fraudulent. That could easily be seen as being illegal. Okay, That's what you're seeing from all these sources. Better Business Bureau. As tempting as these schemes sound, using a shelf company in order to misrepresent your credit worthiness to a bank could be considered loan fraud. Notice, notice the theme here. Every one of them, Better Business Bureau, Entrepreneur, Experian, Dun & Bradstreet, FDIC Alert, everything we're seeing, every authority is saying the same thing. It's considered to be fraud when you're using it for the purpose of getting it actually, of getting credit that you wouldn't normally qualify for. So the credit reporting bureaus do not view shelf corporations with favor. Okay, if the credit reporting agencies learn about you, the company being under new management, they list it on their reports. They effectively re-age the company. So what you're paying for, you don't even get the benefit of. Many lenders will now look at the bank account open date, as I mentioned, as a corporation date. Most shelf corporations don't come with this as bank accounts. So as a result of that, then they automatically default to the day you open the bank account, the day that you bought the shelf corporation anyways. Some shelf corporations have actual credit problems. Makes it harder to get funding, not easier. Think about it. When you buy a shelf corporation, you're, you own the business now. That means that when you come in, 
you are the one that's susceptible to lawsuits. If somebody got credit in that business name, then defaulted, then you're the one that's now responsible for those financial obligations. Okay, so most lenders know what to look for. They'll be able to see if a corporation is a shelf corp. Things like your bank rating, things like when you open your bank account, tip them off. Public records show them ownership changes, red flags. Um, people that are offering shelf corporations and trade lines are mentioned in an alert on your credit report to tell lenders and credit issuers that you're even talking to those kind of people. Okay. So we had one of these clients that never did anything wrong. A shelf corporation pulled her business credit report without her even knowing because nobody needs your permission to do so. And her credit report got red flagged just because the company that looked at the report done in Bradstreet knew sold these kind of shelf corporations. So Business Week says, our conclusion with that is clearly unethical and possibly illegal. I understand the small business owners are strapped for cash and unable to get loans, but they should stay away from these things. If you can't get a loan from a bank, you need to look at other options, maybe even close your doors. It's a bad time, but if you can't secure capital with what your company has in assets, liabilities, and cash flow, you shouldn't try to fool a financial institution. So shelf corporations are costly. Some cost 500 to six grand. You even saw an example of somebody paying spending $15,000. And some companies, again, can charge up to 20,000. The cost depends on how long the company has typically been open for. If you buy a shelf, now remember, you are the owner and responsible for anything bad. So what may have happened with that company since incorporation day is on you. Back taxes, financial audits, defaulting of credit, lawsuits, judgments. The minute you take ownership of that business, all of that liability now becomes yours as well. So think about that um, when you're thinking about purchasing one of these. So shelf corps really aren't needed for business credit building to begin with. Okay, Most vendors will approve new businesses for credit, even if your business just opened or a startup. The key is to know which vendors will help you build business credit and which ones can't. So don't buy a shelf corporation. You don't need one. Look, if you're going to use a shelf corporation to get loans or credit, don't do it. It's a complete waste of money. You're going to waste thousands of dollars to try to convince lenders and credit issuers when they already know what to look for and they already have safeguards, as you've just seen, to know that your business just opened or you just bought it and to count the day that you bought the business as the open date, not even the date it originally opened. So the whole reason you're buying these doesn't work. You just saw from government agencies to the bureaus themselves to the sources like Entrepreneur, what they're saying and what the feedback is. We saw criminal. We saw borderline illegal. We saw unethical. We saw trying to dis to trying to um, d d disguise this. We saw language that really had to do with deception. This is not stuff you want to do. The bureaus can shut you down. The bureaus will red flag your credit profile and score. Lenders and credit issuers are going to scrutinize you more aggressive. Literally, the thing you're trying to fix, make it easier to get money, you're going to make it 10 times harder for yourself to get money. And for what purpose? If you want to build business credit and get money, do it the right way. You can get vendor accounts right away. We got plenty of training on our YouTube channel to teaches you exactly how to build business credit. And you could get credit right away through vendor accounts. You don't need to be a seasoned business. You can get almost all kinds of revolving business credit within six months or less without waiting years. There's just no real benefit of buying these or trying to age a corporation. So recap, we know fast, legal, and ethical ways to build business credit. Vendor credit. Using good credit if you were a guarantor to get unsecured credit. Using services like DMB's Credit Builder to add accounts to your DMB report. Any of those are legitimate ways to build business credit. And you'll probably hear about some less ethical ways to do it too. Buying trade lines, shelf corporations. Okay, these are the type of less ethical ways to try to do it. But FDIC, reporting agencies, well-known magazines, lenders, they all say not to do this. And when everybody says not to do it, you really should not be doing it. Shelf corporations corporations don't work because banks will age your company based on when you took ownership or when the bank opened the bank account to begin with and not the date of creation for the corporation. This is the fail safe when an ownership change occurs. When an ownership change occurs, ah, by default, now the ownership change date is the date the end of the open. Now the date the bank account opened is the second choice that we can look at. So you bypass the benefit of having one anyways. If you're going to spend the money, why not just build your business credit? Look, why spend 500 to 5, 10, 15, 20,000 to buy a shelf corp? You could, you could 
work with us and build your business credit for substantially less than that or do business credit on your own and you'll probably spend more than you will working with us because credit monitoring and things like that are more money but it's still way cheaper than it would be for you to actually even buy a shelf corporation so definitely things to consider so hopefully this answers your questions again i included a lot of different facts in this a lot of different quotes from a lot of authorities I think you'd want to hear of. If you want more, then go to our YouTube channel and type in shelf corporations. We've got other videos that cover this topic, including more quotes, quotes from the reporting agencies, quotes from the Federal Trade Commission and many others. So there's a lot of information I think that you'll be able to get there as well. If you have any questions along the way about building your business credit the right way, way cheaper than buying shelf corporations, or just questions on shelf corporations in general, give us a call 877-600-2487 or email us info at creditsuite.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube and follow us on iTunes so you can listen on the fly. We are not only do we do these kind of presentations, but iTunes is the only place where we actually interview top authorities in their space and all different kinds of things that make it easier for you to be able to grow your business. So make sure that you follow us online on socialcreditsuite.com. Top right of our page, we go live on Facebook weekly. We go live on YouTube weekly, Twitter, Instagram, daily tips. And then we also have our iTunes channel where you can listen on the fly. Hopefully this answers all your questions about shelf corporations. If you have any questions, make sure you visit our website, creditsuite.com, where you'll find our phone number and email to reach out to us directly and talk more. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.